I may have just made the biggest financial mistake of my life. And a few weeks have gone by since I made a video for you guys, and there's good reason why I haven't been uploading. A couple of weeks ago, I made the decision that I would buy a salvaged car and rebuild it here on YouTube to show you guys that honestly anything's possible, even for somebody that has zero experience working on cars. So after watching some of my favorite YouTubers like Matt Armstrong, Backyard Boys, Goon Squad, and even Tafarish rebuild some of their favorite cars, I thought to myself, hey, how hard can it really be? After all, who wouldn't want the car of their dreams? at a fraction of the price. In my last video, I went around to different Copart lots here in Florida to check out all the salvage cars and learn as much as I can about how the auction process works. This is Copart Puna Gorda. got our vests on. For those unaware, Copart is a company that, depending on how you look at it, will either sell you a pile of scrap metal, literal scrap metal, or the car of your dreams at a fraction of the price. I was able to find some of my dream cars at Copart, but it also helped me clearly understand that bidding on these cars solely based off the photos you see online is just not a good idea at all, as 9 times out of 10, those cars have more hidden damage than what you can see in those 7 or 8 photos. Oh my! This is why it's so important to check out the cars in person or at a minimum have someone inspect it for you. Now for those wondering, over the past few weeks I haven't posted, I was busy spending my time trying to win a car. This didn't come without its own set of problems though. I lost some of the cars I was bidding on. This is the last bid. I don't have any more money than this. That's it, I'm out at this, can't do it. Yep, that's it, I lost. Ah, uh, come on. Oh, come on. Some were even postponed to a further date, but finally, after a long time, I was finally able to win one. New bidder. Come on, make it easy. Make it easy on me. Make it easy on me. Come on, come on, come on, make it easy on me. Volkswagen Golf R, which is a pretty cool car. Well, I can't tell you how I'm feeling after spending over $10,000 on a car that luckily, hopefully can drive and run, but um, is absolutely destroyed more than I thought it would be. And we'll have to see if this is a good idea. Now I know from here, it really doesn't look all that bad, but I think I need to show you the extent of the damage and the extent of what I'm working with here. And hopefully you guys can give me some pointers in the comments to help me out because I'm not sure I know how to do all of this just yet. So I'm sure we'll figure out quickly if I'm in over my head on this project, but to me, this is much more than just rebuilding a car. This represents a new start, a new beginning, and a new chapter of my life to truly see if I have what it takes to rebuild some of my favorite cars for you guys on YouTube, and also just to go after my hobbies, even the ones that I thought would be too challenging. Because all in all, I'm just trying to have fun doing the things that I enjoy. So when we look at the car from the front, uh, the damage doesn't look all that bad. And this is another reason why I bought it. All I'm really seeing is a headlight that needs to be replacing. I think the adaptive cruise control sensor is gone, which isn't too expensive to buy used, but the front damage doesn't look too bad. Now, one thing I did notice is as I was pulling the car into uh, my garage, there was coolant leaking and I did pay to get it inspected, but I think I found where the leak is coming from. Now, as you guys can see, besides needing a headlight, I'm also going to need a hood. And you can see right here where the damage was to the adaptive cruise control module. Fortunately, the wiring harness wasn't broken, so that's uh, uh, you know a big savior on money. The main thing I wanted to avoid when purchasing a salvaged car was uh, engine problems, because I have zero experience pulling, changing, or doing anything to an engine. So I wanted to avoid that completely. And that's why I bought a car that was hit kind of a little bit in the front. And as you guys can see, it doesn't look all that bad inside. 
checking out the engine bay, there really doesn't seem to be all that much damage. Fortunately, the only broken things seem far away from the engine, which tells me this really wasn't hit that hard in the front. It's almost as if it was pushed from the back from whatever hit it and into whatever was in front of it. But what I did notice was low coolant, which was a little nerve wracking. Now, I was worried at first, but upon further inspection, I did manage to find the source of the leak. There seems to be a disconnected coolant line that came off of a broken coolant adapter. Over here, in regards to where this was hit. I, it's hard to see, but there is some sort of coolant leak right over here. Besides that though, it seems like I just need to fix the bent support rail and get a new headlight, fender, and hood. Now, if you guys happen to have any 2017 Golf R parts for sale that I may need, please DM me on Instagram, which I linked down in the description below, as I really would appreciate it. I also want to show you the extent of the damage on the inside. Luckily for me, the seats are all intact, which is great, but, all the airbags are pretty much deployed. The driver's airbag, the steering wheel airbag, the curtain airbags on both sides, and the dash airbag. That means I'm gonna be needing a whole new dashboard. But honestly, none of that really scares me, and I feel pretty confident that I can replace most of that stuff because it's simply, you know, unscrewing some bolts and putting some new used parts on the car. But here's where I think I might have bit off more than I can chew. Now, I'm sure by now most of you guys are probably uh, doing the math to how much this would cost and why was it actually totaled out. A headlight, a hood, and stuff like that wouldn't total out a car. Behind me is the reason why this thing was considered Total. After getting a better look at the back of this car, I started to notice a few things that I didn't actually see in the pictures. Uh, the rear quarter panel was kind of indented, which means this was hit a lot harder in the rear than I had expected, and it seems like it got pushed in a lot further into the trunk than I had originally thought. Now, when I bought this car and when I looked at the photos, it honestly didn't look too bad hit in the rear uh, because the bumper's kind of sticking out a little bit. The problem is when I looked in inside there, as you saw, the trunk where the spare tire goes is no longer flat with the spare tire on it. It's kind of pushed up like this, which is a little scary because I've never actually pulled or pushed any metal before. It's no longer just unscrewing bolts and putting on new parts. Now I actually have to bend things and that's where things get a little bit scary and I feel like I might have bit off a little bit more than I can chew because I didn't see that in the photos and now I'm kind of dealing with the consequences but I'm trying to look at all the good things that came out of this and the positives and I'm also trying to come up with a game plan as to where I should start on this car. And I'd love for you guys to help me out down in the comments below with where you think I should even begin on this. Do I start on the front? Do I start on the inside? Or do I start on the rear? Another problem that I noticed from getting hit in the rear is how tight the gap is between the quarter panel and the door. Now, fortunately, the door does open. Well, I got the door open. It wasn't actually stuck that much, but it definitely gets really close to rubbing here, and that's a problem, which means when the car was hit this way, it pushed all this in, and now I have to figure out how to push it all out, and a lot of that's going to be getting this off first so I can even enter the inside. Now, in order to feel like I've made some progress today uh, from getting this car, I think what I'm going to do is clean the inside of it and maybe clean the outside of it. Also, before I forget, I want to show you guys the mileage on the car, but I think the battery is dead. Now, we were able to jumpstart it getting it off the flatbed, but Ever since leaving it here, the battery completely died. So it's probably been dead for a while now and giving it a quick jump start was enough to move it. But now that it's sitting yet again and hasn't had enough time to recharge, I'm gonna have to jump the car again to get the mileage because when I click the button, nothing happens. Jumping a car is pretty easy. Lucky for me, this car did come with a key. So it does make the process a whole lot easier. Now, instead of using jumper cables, I decided to buy a portable jump starter as it makes the process a whole lot easier especially when the car died on the ramp. But all you do is turn the box on, connect the red alligator clamp to the positive lead on the battery and the black to the black lead. That should send the needed 12 volts to the car and inevitably turn the car on. All right, so a moment of truth. I have power coming here. You can see the lights on there, the lights on the floor. Uh, so I'm gonna press this and let's hope for the best. All righty, so we got power. What do we got? Lots of codes. 34,000 miles, auto hold is not available, airbag lights, front assist not available, then check coolant, we got coolant leaks, tire pressure monitoring system, lovely, 
adaptive front lighting system. All right, I think that's the extent of it, of all the problems we got on this car, but I am happy that it starts, and I am happy that it does, uh, that we, that we have power going everything. With the car finally getting some power, I was able to turn on the electrics without actually starting the car and shift it into neutral. With a little help from my dad as the supervisor, we were able to roll the car out of the garage so that I can clean the interior with some leather cleaner as well as vacuum up all the broken glass and then be able to cut out the airbags and even wash the car or at least use some waterless wash to get off all the dust. So I'm gonna to try to clean all this mold since the back glass is blown out. There's literally like mold or dirt or whatever from the insurance auction where it sat at, but I'd like to clean all the glass that's in here. And you can see the kind of like the dirt that's gone on all the leather. So I just wanna quickly clean this, vacuum it up so when I work in here, it's not as gross. As I cleaned the interior, I was making a mental list of parts for things that needed to be replaced as well as things I needed to take a look at. Obviously, I will need to replace the curtain airbags, the steering wheel airbag, and the entire dash since the airbag explosion ripped a hole through it. Now for things I need to repair, I hopefully can fix the creases in the roof lining, and I'll need to send the seatbelts out for repair and replacement potentially since they locked up during the crash. And also for whatever reason, I can't seem to open this center console. All right, so I just finished cleaning the car, waterless washing it, as well as some leather and interior cleaner on the inside. It finally smells and looks good, and I feel comfortable sitting in the car now that there's no glass broken everywhere. But uh, talk about one heck of a day getting delivery of this car, and I'm really just trying to take this all in, and I don't even want to even think about the rear end of this car because that's where the extent of this damage is, and I have a feeling that the rear trunk, like the boot of the car where the spare tire is, has kind of crumpled up like this, so I'm gonna need to figure out a way to push that back in a garage because I don't have a frame machine. So definitely let me know down in the comments below what you think I should be doing, the order of operations I should even be attacking this car. I think the first thing I'm probably gonna do is fix that coolant leak that I showed you in the front of the car. This way I can turn the car on and off and not see coolant shooting out everywhere. And this way it doesn't make a mess in my garage here. And then we'll have to start ordering some parts and going from there. But you know, I appreciate all you guys from checking this car out and the journey that we're gonna have it's gonna be a big project this is uh, I really hope I didn't uh, bite off more than I can chew so we'll see but that's pretty much it for today's episode definitely make sure to smash the like button turn on post notifications subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video <laughs>